Welcome to the second episode of our micro RPG series, everyone. It's just Amelia and myself for this episode again today, but we get to cover a couple more really great games from James D'Amato's book, The Ultimate Micro RPG Book. But before we get to that, it's time for our normal announcements. We just have one big announcement this week. Um, a catacon is kickstarting right now. Ooh. Woo! As of the release of this episode, there are about nine days left on the campaign. Um, we have always had so much fun mm. at that convention. Like, it's such a good time. It's it's friend convention, honestly. It's like it you have time to see people. You have time to, like, play games and just hang out. Like, it's just it's just a wonderful little community. Mm -hmm. Um I definitely missed going last year. It was yeah. such a bummer. Um, but hopefully November, like, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, right? So they are kickstarting right now. We'll put a link in the show notes if you can take a look. Um, you can get tickets through mm -hmm. the Kickstarter. Um, hopefully we will see everyone there. Yeah, uh, and if you're unable to go and you want to support the convention anyway, or if you are a regular and want to support it, you can always get a, a, a tabletop uh, little uh, banner. It's true, and then you can, they're projects. great for photo ops. You can hold exactly. your little sign and take a picture. That's what yeah. I do with ours. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, definitely check it out. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If uh, things line up and Amelia and I are both able to attend, uh, there will definitely be a character creation cast panel. Yes. Uh, because, uh, of course, we, we need to make some random character nonsense again. God, uh, it was such a good been, time. It's been too long. It's been too long. <laughs> it was such a good time. Yeah. So uh, keep an eye out for that as well. So we also wanted to point your attention uh, to the One Shot Network Patreon page at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Uh, if you're not yet a patron, now is a great time to sign up as relatively soon uh we're actually going to be releasing uh our first new bonus content uh for all the five dollar and up patrons uh we should have more on that uh probably as we head into august as well mm -hmm. we've had a lot of fun with the series so you can expect more micro games probably like this from us uh more character creation sessions possibly for games that we've already covered uh, who knows what else we'll, we'll we'll get up to, but we got plans. Man, we'll roll on some random tables. We'll <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're looking for all kinds of fun things too. And I, honestly, if there's you know some kind of weird thing that you'd love to hear, um, let us know because mm -hmm. we get to the the Patreon episodes are nice because we don't have to follow our regular format. We can kind of just freestyle and and do what we want it gives us a little more wiggle room um mm -hmm. so if there's something that you'd like to hear from us that we haven't done too feel free to let us know when we can take a look yeah absolutely uh for now uh, let's get to the show where we will be covering it wants souls and van gogh's ear enjoy Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems, except today when we have no guests. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and today my co-hosts Ryan and I are excited to welcome absolutely no one as we discuss a selection of games from the Ultimate Micro RPG book. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some deja vu here. Whoa, it sounds like very similar to what you said last week. It's very true. Uh, <laughs> we certainly didn't just copy and paste that because, you know, we're busy podcasters. Well, we did copy and paste it, but then I didn't read what you copied and pasted, so. Oh, that's very true. I I made it my own. Professional. <laughs> like, a, like a true creative genius. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, we are going to be covering a multitude of games this series, uh, and we are actually going to be covering two games per episode. Uh, so you get a total of six games this month. Uh, so it's very exciting. For the price of one? 
Uh, for what the price deal. of one, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Which is also um, free because you don't pay us to make uh, it. It's it's almost a, a kind of a metaphor for this whole book because you get forty games for the price of one. Actually, less than the price of one, depending on how much that game costs, or that's more. A, that's extremely true. Uh, somewhere around the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, on today's episode, uh, we are going to be covering uh, "It Wants Souls." A Game of Horrific Possession by Quinn Murphy. So there's probably some content warnings on that, potentially. Mm -hmm. Might be get a little spooky for that one. Um, and Van Gogh's Ear by Jen Ellis and Keith Baker. Which, you know, by the name of it, it sounds like it could be spooky. But it's a game of inadvisable gifts, um, which is tagged as funny. So uh, I'm excited to figure out what that one's all about. All right, so we're going to start with It Wants Souls. What's in a game? Mm -hmm. um, which, yes, does have a content warning. Um, it is labeled as demonic possession for the content. Yes. Um, so just be aware there's going to be some um, spooky stuff. It's maybe a little bit more um, grown up potentially than potentially. some of the other games. Not necessarily because it's Ryan and I and the last time we made secret agents who cared about cheese. It's so, true. Um, this, yeah, this one's really interesting, though, because uh, we create a family, mm -hmm. and this family is uh, uh, moving into a house for the first time. Yes. And the house is haunted, of course. Um, and then you basically play out between uh, what's called the outsider, which is kind of the insidious uh, ghost figure in the house. Um and the family and it looks like it's kind of played in phases possibly um but it, it's interesting because we create our family first and then we talk about the house and then stuff starts breaking bad yeah should we should we find out what happens yeah let's find out what happens let's play to find out play to find out let's make some people um okay so uh set up at the outset design or designate one character as the outsider uh, this should be done secretly, so only uh, she or he is initially aware of it. Oh, interesting. Well, it's a three to five player game, so this right. is this is wild. Um, so we can't really not know because you know it has to be one of us. Has to be one of us, but also we could not tell our listeners though. You and I could know, and we could not tell the listeners. Oh, that's that's almost uh, that's almost cheating. Listeners, no, you are now player three in our game. Cheating. <laughs> uh, what if the listener? We should just roll a d6, and whomever is uh, one one through two for you, mm -hmm. two uh, three through four for me, and five and six for the listeners. Oh, uh, so See, listeners. All, well, okay. You yeah, might be right. the outsider in our game. All right, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Just gonna make it up. Okay. Do you want me to get my dog in here? Would that help? And no, maybe it's okay. Peggy can. Peggy's the outsider. All right. So we've got uh, the outsider chosen, um, and we'll reveal it at the end uh, because you know suspense and all that. This this mm -hmm. the whole genre, right? Right. Actually, the so, genre's horror. Yeah. Look at the label. But well, it's, it's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, for each player in the family, including the outsider, write the following on index cards. Mm -hmm. Roll. Are you a parent, a child, aunt, or uncle? Okay, so that's interesting. So, um, what do you think you're going to be here? Hmm. And apparently we have to make one for the audience as well. Yeah. So, I'm thinking, I, I almost wanted to say that the audience was a the family dog. I don't um, think that's, is that a choice? I don't know. I mean, we can make things up, right? I, they can be an estranged uncle. Oh, okay. Does it have to be estranged, though? Well, I don't know. Let's just say that the audience is uh, a child. Okay. Um, do, right, we audience, be, do, we want, do we want to be the parents? Sure. Well, that's adorable. You can. Do you want to be mom or dad? Um, I'm fine with either. Okay, I want to be the dad. Okay, I'll be the mom. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could also be a dad if you wanted to. I mean, that's dads. fair. I'll be the uh, the the demigirl mom. Okay. A she they pronouns. Uh, you can be a she they mom. 
She, they, mom. Okay. All right. So we got mom, she, they, dad, he, him, child, mm-hmm. they, them. Hey, them. Hey, there, there you go. Because we've got a plural audience. Mm-hmm. One would hope at this point. If you're still Gosh, with I us after so. the cheese fiasco <laughs> from last episode. <laughs> That's actually our, our audience is actually not plural anymore. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> okay. So um, what's your age? Um, so I want to, I want, I want the child to be like 10 or under. Okay. So let's like, say like eight. Yeah. Or, eight. No, let's roll a D10. We'll see Ooh. how young our child is. Yeah. Because we can roll dice. I know. <laughs> is two too young? Um, no, because okay. if the outsider is the child, that's tremendously Spooky. creepy. Spooky. That's true. If that is the case. Uh, okay. So our child is two. Um, how old do you want to be? Um, so it's uh, probably anywhere between 20 and 35. Um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to roll a D20 and add 20 to it. Okay. That's a good call. I will do that as well. 30. Um, apparently 25. Oh, okay. It's you, Marion, a younger man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Strengths. What are two things that describe your character in a positive way? Use one word descriptions for each strength. Examples. Resilient, resourceful, brave, clean, witty, strong, quick. Mm, okay. So you need to pick two of those. Interesting. I think my dad character is going to be handy. Seems like a dad thing. Nice. Think dads are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say sure. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I am. I am very not handy. I am um, not either. But um, uh, oh, but I'm also th- not a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with computers. Um, go. My dad is too. My dad is also handy and good with computers. So I did great at puns and grilling and like all the dad things. I mean, I fake being handy, mm-hmm. but I do a bad job at it. Gotcha. So like, I can technically fix things almost. Yeah. Um, but there's like always something wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a sitcom. It's, it's so it's so annoyed. So I'm like, okay, you're logically, like, I'm so close. I can get ninety percent of the way there. Literally, logically, I know how this is supposed to go together. But then it's like something's just slightly off in the <sighs> end, and I'm like, how? I follow directions. I can put together IKEA furniture like nobody else, though. Oh, me too. I actually really enjoy it. I find it, like, very, like, soothing because it's, Mm -hmm. like, there's directions and everything goes the way that it's supposed to. And, like, you know, Mm -hmm. I know people that, like, can't, that cannot do it. Um, And I just don't understand. Just follow Mm -hmm. the instructions. It's those people that are like, I don't need to read instructions. Um, (laughs) Yes, actually, you do. Exactly. You do. Um, so, so anyway, I need another word for my dad. Andy uh, and something. What's another things that describe your character in a positive way? Uh, dependable. Yeah. Mm. I want something that's not like a boring dad thing, though. You know. Oh, okay. Not that all dads are the same, but you know, like something that's not like Hallmark greeting card dad. Mm-hmm. Nerdy. How about fashionable? Ooh, fashionable. I like it. I went. And I with... think for our audience, child, we can each pick one, maybe. Yeah. Okay. What are you going with? So I'm going with uh, thorough and empathetic. Oh, those are good ones. Um, so for the child, I wanted to say creative. Okay, I like that. Um, I'm going to say um, like logical. Okay. Uh, good with puzzles and stuff. Love it. Okay, so now we've got to choose one thing. Uh, these are weaknesses. One thing that describes your character in a negative way. Uh, use one word descriptions of the weaknesses. Examples, cowardly, small, stubborn, messy, scatterbrained, weak. Almost, uh, goodness gracious, for child, we could just say they baby. That's two words. They baby? What? <laughs> they're baby. They're, they're babies. Babies. They're just, they're, That's they your are weakness. Babies. Your weakness is you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, two-year-olds. Uh 
Yeah. <laughs> that is your weakness, toddler. That's <laughs> probably. Um, I, I would say messy probably would be the good messy child make, one. Messy. Messy makes sense, yeah. I've never um, met a clean child. <laughs> sticky. Um, sticky would be a great one. <laughs> They are always sticky. <laughs> I don't Although, know why. <laughs> Quinn, Quinn at age two was very uh, good about cleaning up after himself. Okay. Um, Quinn at age four. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't think mine ever were. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. What is my weakness? Um, I'm going to say short-tempered. Mm. And you have to say an actual bad thing about your character. <laughs> I know. Um, I was also thinking short tempered, but like, um, I can change mine if you think no, that that's like, I, I was trying to think of something else cause I didn't want to go short tempered. Um, what's another, it could be stressed. Yeah. I like, I like that one. Stressed. Easily stressed or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All Ooh, right. Fear. Fear. What is the one thing your character is afraid, is most afraid of? Spiders, darkness, isolation, snakes, knives. Those are intense. Okay. Um, I think for our child, it's probably dark, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that seems like a reasonable... Yeah. I mean, kids are afraid of, like, the dark monsters. Uh, but monsters because of the dark. Yeah. Monsters noises. because of the dark. Loud noises. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say dark. I think that seems like the most, like... We've just made world's most generic child. <laughs> <laughs> my my child is very creative and logical. They're a bit messy, though, but they are also afraid of the dark. Yeah. You know, got some good things and bad things going for them, but they're mm-hmm. a child. Yes. My and we child love them is dearly. a child, and all of the things that you would th- think a child would be. <laughs> um, all right. So for my dad character, I'm going to say, what is he afraid of? Does it have to be, like, a thing that you'd come across all the time? Because I wanted, like, my first instinct was marsupials, but that's probably not going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it would, right? Because it sounds like whatever we choose is probably going to be terrorizing the family. It's mm. another good, like, you know what? I'm going to be not myself, and I'm going to say that this dad is afraid of blood. Oh, there you go. Like my real dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dad does not like blood or like needles or anything, which is really funny because my mom is a nurse. And so mm-hmm. she's always like, want to hear about this thing? And he's like, no, no, do not. please, why? <laughs> Definitely no. Why are you tormenting me? <laughs> <laughs> um, I went with accidents for my fear. Ooh, that's a good one. All right. All right. So, uh... Throughout family creation, the outsider should stay quiet. Your time is coming. Okay. We don't have to worry about that because we have very secretly noted who the outsider is. Uh, um, and now, so now, first scene of the game is the family's first night in the new home. Use this scene to describe the house, portray an average night with the family, explore what each character loves about the other members of the family, determine any problems the family faces okay. during this scene the outsider remains quiet watching the interactions and answering the following questions on a set of cards the outsider keeps hidden each question on a separate card hmm. how long has my soul been trapped here what part of the house is my soul most bound to do i want a soul to keep here and torment or do i want a soul so i can inhabit the body whose soul do i most desire okay after so the outsider my, has my first the interpretation was the outsider was one of the family members. Yeah, but it sounds like no. It sounds like no, yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. So for each player in the family, including the outsider, write the following on the index cards. Right? So the outsider does create a family member. Right. That's what I was thinking. Like But I'm wondering if the outsider is it's a different family member? Is not only no. Well, I think the outsider is playing both the family member and the outsider. Uh, cool. Maybe. Yeah. So this uh, it's this game is inspired by movies like Insidious, The Country, and Sinister. I'm guessing it says paranormal designate, activity. It says designate one character as yeah. the outsider, not one player. Yeah, that's true. I'm. I. This is really interesting. Okay. And then for each player in the family, 
including the outsider, for the following. Yeah, your family has moved into a new home and mm-hmm. is soon terrorized by a being from beyond. You have few clues to its origins or nature. Whatever it is, it wants souls. So the family yeah, so I wants think you're to, doing both. Yeah, I think you're doing both at that point. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to go in and like do the, the house description? I know that gets into gameplay and stuff. Yeah, no, but, I like, think I'd love I think to describe. Like, we even have if to we describe this house. Like play it as a scene. I would like to describe it. Yeah, we have to describe the house. We have to less because this is kind of the fan fiction portion, right? Yeah. Because we created our people. We don't have names for them yet. Um, no, they're mom, dad, and child. Mom, dad, and child. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I kind of like the. Uh, <laughs> Like the thought of a whole movie like this, where it's literally like the mom calls the dad dad, and the dad calls the mom mom, and hey, there's kiddo. This, and this two year old kid, uh, yeah, kiddo buddy, hey buddy, you sweetheart, honey, yep, yeah, oh, just all all these <laughs> yeah. generic names, and like you never get the names, the actual names of the characters. That feels so creepy because it's like weirdly impersonal and like yeah. detached. In, yeah. like, a very kind of, like, I don't know, yeah. But also, like, generic enough that you can throw yourself into their shoes. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't want to name them. I don't want to name them either. We've okay. given We've given them pronouns, and that might be too much. No. <laughs> that's how you know, because otherwise they have to, like, portray somebody in the movie, and you got to kind of, like, you know. I mean, that's fair. I guess that, that really doesn't actually matter. Never yeah. Mind. Now that I say it out loud, it doesn't actually matter. No. Um... It does help you refer to people, though, because referring to them by it's true. pronouns is, is we'll, we'll keep it. helpful occasionally. Um, so what's this house look like? What is this? Describe the house. Write info on a card. I'm going to flip it on the back of this little card mm-hmm. that I wrote our info on here. Okay. Um, I'm not super familiar with, like, architectural styles. Um, so let's start. Let's, let's maybe, like, pick... For starters, like, where, where is this house? Like, you know, obviously we live in the United yeah. States. So, like, that's kind of what, you know, it's like, is it a coastal thing? Is it a, you know, southern, like, well, let's, you know, wraparound porch kind of thing? Let's is get a, conceptually. Is this a, a starter home? Is this, mm-hmm. uh, is this our dream home? Is this, like, a, a step up from our starter home? Okay, so we are 25 and 30 and we have a two-year-old. Yes. So I don't think it's our dream home. Okay, not yet. I don't think that that's, you know, I mean, I know it is a role-playing game, but <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest, I'm 32 and I don't even have a home yet. Right. So, <laughs> um, Although there is something to be said of finally finding the perfect home, forever home, and it being and haunted. And it being haunted as what? Oh, hmm. yeah. You know what? We have um, somebody's grandparent maybe passed away and so now we have the money for a down payment we're gonna spend it and like really put it into our dream home yeah like, i like that we're gonna we're gonna do it okay mm-hmm. so this is our dream home mm-hmm. um i think it's like maybe a three bedroom right because we have one kid mm-hmm. let's do so, let's do like four bedroom uh because then you've got one for an office room to grow yeah room to grow yeah okay all right so we're 25 and 30 buying a four bedroom home oh my god <laughs> It's fine. I just can't even fathom this. I'm in a two-bedroom apartment. Well, I'm okay. thinking that we probably have decent jobs, right? Mm, yeah. Um, plus inheritance. No, actually, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Okay, that, that's fine. <laughs> so I'm the, I'm the I'm the breadwinner of the family, um, and uh, the inheritance that we had gotten mm-hmm. um, let us go a long way with this uh, to get a. To get our, our forever. We could home. also say it's 1975. So, you know. I mean, that's fair too. We can afford whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a nice house. Yeah. Basically. So it's a nice house. It's got um, some nice open architecture. And because, um, gosh, it's, it's just creepy to have like three rooms totally connected by sight line. Mm-hmm. And like you're in the kitchen and you can see stuff like three rooms away happening and it's dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That can get spooky. Yeah. I think it has a really big tree in the front yard and in the living room, there's gotta be like a big bay window or big picture window 
so that um, at night this tree can be spooky flailing and, you know, like. Oh, yeah. You get spooky tree shadows. That's important mm-hmm. to me. Spooky tree sh- shadows are very So I think good. it's important that we move in in the fall, obviously. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a big um, tree in the front yard. Vaulted ceilings. Mm-hmm. Those are always nice. Um, um, a big, big open staircase. Yeah. How are we affording this? With the inheritance. I know. It'll last us at least 10 years. And then, you but know. I'm just saying, my very wealthy grandpa died and I cannot afford No. <laughs> <laughs> An extremely wealthy grandpa. Yeah. Um, they probably died in a plane crash, so there was some kind of settlement or something, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Vaulted ceilings. Big staircase. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's an attic, right? Oh, yeah, there has to be an attic. Um, well, I, like an above the garage attic or like we're talking attic attic? Attic attic? Sure. We can do that. Like half the house uh, attic. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Ad- attic. Attic. Has an attic. I know now I said it's attic. We attic. said it too many times. Attic. Um, attic. Um, I also like, um, like big basement storage room. Okay. Like the. I wrote too big. That's fine. Sorry. I can always get another card. Basement storage room. Mm-hmm. Mm, like the one that we had in one house that we lived in where there was a bat painted on the wall that said blood underneath it. Mm-hmm. B-L-U-D. Mm-hmm. Legit yeah, some, house that I lived in. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's something like that. Yeah, something like that. That's not spooky at all. So, no, it was not creepy at all. It certainly explains a lot. About me? <laughs> yes. We only lived there for six months. It's not like Doesn't it was a matter. formative time of my life. Blood magic but. knows no bounds of time. That's true. You're right. The bat with the fangs and the word blood written underneath it is definitely <laughs> what did it for me. Yep. <laughs> B-L-U-D. Blood. 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 <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, um, what is an average night for this family? Um, I think dinner and then uh, time with the kid. Mm-hmm. And then um, putting the child to bed and then afterwards uh, relaxing time together. Yeah. We watch some TV or a movie or something to catch up on whatever we DVR'd for the week. And Yeah. Yeah. That seems that seems okay. pretty average. Yeah. It seems like a normal family. That's what normal families do. <laughs> uh, dinner. Kid time. We have to give the kid a bath, you know. Yep. Uh, put him to bed and then TV time. Mm-hmm. Seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. I assume I wouldn't know. It's just me. <laughs> My ex and I worked opposite shifts, so we were like never both home in the evening at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, same with my parents, actually, again, because my mom's a nurse. She always worked like second and third shift. Oh, so, yeah. like, we never did like dinner time. You know, I was just like, not a thing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Explore what each character loves about the other members of the family. Oh, that's nice. Um, and determine any problems the family faces. Oh, my God. Hmm. Um, okay. I mean, I don't, like, what do you say, oh, like, I really love about my kid? You're just I like, mean, it's my kid. I'm genetically predisposed to love them. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, I think <laughs> um, because, like, uh, it, uh, this kid is uh, two years old, mm-hmm. uh, we love that they are not fussy. Oh. Man, you have made a dream child, Ryan. I know, uh, which makes it all the more. Spooky. They don't cry during dinner time. Yeah, and even if you go to a restaurant, they don't cry. Yeah. What? Like they only cry when there's something seriously wrong. Ooh, oh, that's gonna be so spooky. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't have a child like does not understand why we're like that's creepy. <laughs> it's so creepy. <laughs> Don't uh, cry but, at but restaurants. otherwise, like they're they're very giggly, very like personable. Uh, they're 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 getting decent at words, but not like perfect. But not yet. to the point where they won't shut up. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's <laughs> I, I know that two year old. We're such, we're such good parents, Ryan. <laughs> we love our kids. <laughs> this but, is like these are the comments of people who like really have children. I was like, what's the perfect thing? He talks, but like not so much. <laughs> I always tell people that too. they're like, oh, my kid's not saying any words yet. And I'm like, that's really great. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, <laughs> they I, don't I, follow I, you around <laughs> telling you about Pokemon. Yep. Uh, one day. 
that will happen. Yeah. Um, no, I want I want our child to like be able to speak to the point where you have to listen closely to fully understand them. Okay. Right. So, yeah. like, if they say something, we're like, "Are we sure that they said something that oh, way?" Oh, yeah. And like, that's right. Still in for, that translation phase. Yeah, that's right for super shenanigans of the horror variety. Yeah. So good. What did you say? So good. Uh, red rum. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that's just how he says blanket. Don't worry yep, about that's it. just blanket. That's just a blanket. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, and then each other. Yeah. So let's see. Um, I'm going to say that I love how, uh, good you are with the kids. With with the kid. Just the one. With the child. We don't have kids. Isn't there two? Yet. Uh, there Um, might be. I don't know. If you're seeing two children, we're already into the horror variety. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's see here. I almost want uh, the mom to be, like, early pregnancy. Oh. Oh, that makes it so creepy. I know. Um, I like that. See, I don't know what your job is, but I want to say that it's something that you're, like, really passionate about and really good at. And, like, Mm -hmm. that is a thing that I really like about you, that you have something that you are good at and proud of. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, the way that you light up when you talk about it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's got to be a job of, like, something where I help people, right? Mm, but, yeah. But requires a lot of, like, uh, bureaucracy and paperwork or something like that. Yeah, so maybe you're, like, a social worker or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I can see that working out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't see that, like, paying for a dream home, possibly, but no, maybe. No, that's what the inheritance was for. That's true. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, maybe, I, maybe I'm not a stay-at-home dad. Maybe I'm, like, a work-from-home. Or like a freelance creative mm-hmm. type. Um, <gasps> fashion. Fashion. That's right. I am very fashionable. Maybe yeah. I am. Yeah. Maybe you do some like uh, design. Design work. That's what that extra bedroom is for. That's where I do my design work. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And that I'm handy and crafty. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Okay. Um. So. So what problems? Any do problems we face? are yeah. we having? Yeah. Um. I think maybe we had to move to like move into this dream home. Yeah. Um, and that maybe has been kind of tough because you like you're good at your job and like mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, but you had to move to like a new city and a new department to be a social worker here. Yeah. Um, and so like that's put a lot of strain on you and your job and like learning, you know, a whole new sort of like system and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff has been and- really difficult. Yeah, um, and and this this department's not used to the way I do things, right? So it's like they're kind of grading against me to try to do things their way, right? And I think like because I'm working from home, I feel like pretty isolated, mm-hmm. um, because my friends aren't here and I don't have like that support network around oh, me. Oh yeah, um, so it's just been putting a lot of strain. I think on, on both of us, like I we think... both, I, I think we both wanted the move, but it's been hard on both of us in different ways. Yeah. And I think both of us are experiencing that, like, lack of friendship. Yeah. Because, like, I'm grading people at work the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody else there is, like, this, like, work. Kind of clicky. Yeah, clicky mentality of sorts. And I can't get friends there somehow. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Oh, sad. This is really sad. (laughs) Okay, I, like, don't want these people to be haunted. They're already having a tough time. It, only in a way, right? Um, yeah. But they're, they're at the beginning stages. This is the first time that they're kind of uh, in their dream home now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so. So the first night in the new dream home, um, we basically say what the home was like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it probably got, we've got boxes everywhere because yeah. we just moved in. We got our bedrooms set up. Um, the moving companies helped us since we're in a, you know, a completely different city. Right. Um, and uh, and we're, you know, mid uh, unpacking. So we've we both have time off for this, and uh, we're we're fresh 
in this city and fresh at our new jobs and stuff, at least for me. So during this scene, the outsider remains quiet, watching the interactions and answering the following questions on a set of cards the outsider keeps hidden. Each question on a separate card. Oh, oh, okay. So now the secret outsider will do this process. Okay. Um, let's see here. Making terror. Hmm. The family starts scenes. The outsider interrupts the family member creating the scene by making terror. The outsider describes how things go bad. See, then everyone's going to know who the outsider is, though. Well, I mean... We can kind of, quote-unquote, give up the ghost at this point, right? <laughs> ghost. <laughs> because we made our people, right? Mm-hmm. And that right. was, and we made our house. Uh, and this is where we would actually get into the gameplay itself, right? That's true. That's true. So I suppose that, like, when we go through, I can talk about what I wrote on the cards. Okay. And why. See, I thought I was the outsider. Um, no, it was a three. You said you were one and two. I was three and four. Oh, oh I thought you were one and two. Nope. That's fine. Whatever. Wait, I mean, if you want to have answers, that's fine. We can both say that we <laughs> what our answers were because I am interested, I guess. Yeah. We could say that we uh, did it wrong all along anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and actually, we're both the outsiders. Oh, fancy. Um, and then we can, you know, we can tell two different stories there. That's true, too. Oh, I only answered half the questions, though. Oh, okay. Do you want to? Answer the other two. That's fine. I can yeah, let me do that. Um, the last two are pretty short, I think, right? Mm-hmm. They're kind of like, not yes or no, but, you know. Right. Has it occurred to you that we're actually, like, very good at this? <laughs> we are very good at this. We're really good at this. Um, okay, so I've got my answers. Yeah, I, I'm going to lock those in. Okay. Mine are, mine are written down on cards, so I can prove that... There you go. Okay. So we've described our house. We made our family. Mm-hmm. We did our secret role to determine who the outsider was. Yes. Um, so that the audience wouldn't hear it. We then misinterpreted the role <laughs> um, and both thought we were the outsider. Uh huh. <laughs> because Ryan couldn't remember who he assigned which numbers to. I have audio <laughs> evidence of it. Uh, um, I, but... guess we, I guess when you edit, you'll find out who was right. I'm pretty sure you said you were one and two and I was three and four. Right. Um, and we rolled a three. <laughs> yep. So, so we rolled a three. I rolled a um, three. Yep, yep. So <laughs> it, wasn't you, it wasn't you, dear audience. You don't it have homework you. to yes. do for this episode. Yes. Um, you, sweet baby, are fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, so if you were following along at home and writing things down on cards, um, because you have the book and could see what you need to be doing, I'm so sorry it was not you. Mm-hmm. Though do please email us and tell us what you came up with. Because <laughs> it's interesting. So we actually both came up with something secretly. Right, right. So um, so we've got kind of like parallel uh, universes going on here. Yeah, parallel sp- spooky situations. Uh-huh. Am I missing a card? No, they're stuck together. Okay. So for the outsider, you were supposed to answer... Four questions, one Mm -hmm. on each card. Um, The questions, how long has my soul been trapped here? Mm -hmm. What what did you write, Ryan? Um, Since the house was built. Oh, but we didn't say how old the house was. Exactly. It's fine. Okay. But just the fact that the house was built um, trapped my soul here. Oh, interesting. Okay. I said 50 years. Okay. Okay. Um. What part of the house is my soul most bound to? Can be an item. Can Um, be an item. But I chose the basement storage room. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I chose the big tree outside. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Do I want a soul to keep here or a body so I can... uh, Do I want a soul to keep here in torment or do I want a soul so I can inhabit a body? I chose I want to inhabit a body. That's what I chose as well. Ooh. Ooh. And the most important question, whose soul do I most desire? I chose the unborn child. Ooh, that's spooky. That is not what I picked. No. <laughs> I did, however, pick the mom. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so tell me tell me your little ghost story. Do you have a story for your little, or did you just answer those questions? It's so you. I'll... Of course, you have a backstory here. 
Yeah, so I was thinking it was like um, this house was built upon either the the place that this person or uh, entity ex- existed, like either the person died here or is buried here in this location, right? Mm-hmm. And then a house was built upon it because a suburban expansion, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then uh, because the basement storage room is closest to that grave or or if it's a demonic entity closest to, uh, you know, H-E doubles hockey sticks itself, mm-hmm. um, you've got uh, that basement storage room that's a perfect place for it to kind of seep into. Ooh. Um, and then uh, inhabiting a body is wanting to experience life again Mm -hmm. and the unborn child is to experience all of life again oh that's really good it's very good so what what about yours um i see i was like what's the creepiest possible kind of ghost you could have and i was like that's a spooky ghost kid because everybody knows that those are like the creepiest Mm -hmm. um so like i imagine it just like kind of like hangs out in the tree because like when you're a kid you like to climb trees and stuff right yeah um and i think that like as a kid you you like naturally kind of attach yourself to like a mom figure like that's Mm -hmm. just like kids love moms um not that they don't love dads but like you know right um it's like that mothering figure um and so like i think it wants to like be associated with the mom mm-hmm. um but not to torment her be- just because it like wants a mom mm-hmm. um so like it wants to inhabit her body because then it's like for real mom yeah can't like can't be abandoned like you can't abandon a thing that's inside you right you know yeah so um yeah i think it's a it's a very like childish sort of want and desire like nothing necessarily like super creepy or spooky about it but yeah. just like it it wants to be loved I wonder if uh, if this child, um, like, ages ago, uh, you know, 50 years ago, you said, mm-hmm. um, was, you know, left to their own accord too much. Yeah. And that could be. wanted attention of their parents and you know, would climb this tree and maybe that's how they met their demise. Ooh. You know? Yikes. and And that's why they're haunting the location. Yeah. Yeah. And I like... I. I spent a little time thinking about it. I'm like, okay, why is it a ghost? Was it? But then I was like, mm, I don't know. Dead kids kind of weirds me out. I don't really want to like get into that. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to have this attachment to the mom. And kid ghosts are creepy. Kid ghosts are creepy. Kid ghosts are creepy. Uh, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is our uh, creepy family haunting. Oh lord. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of like our this child like seeing another child or like kind of like having this playmate and like, you know, um, yeah, somebody there. It's interesting. Spooky. So yeah, terror stuff happens. There's, uh, stuff about living in the home. Uh, after arrival, each character gets a scene in which they are doing something to make life normal. Um, and you get to see how long at the seat, how long after uh, the previous scene, this scene takes place. You roll one d six, so it could be a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. So you're you're constantly kicking the timeline down every scene you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you ask, does the scene build the family, or do you discover more about the outsider? Um, and you just go through this, and then you get some sort of roll off at the end of the game. Yeah, and uh, there's part of it. It's like, do you? Asking, like, are you pretending things are normal? Are you trying to get, like, religious help? Do you have scientists come in to figure mm-hmm. out what's going on? Like, you spend a little bit of time in the game, too, trying to, like, yeah, determine what's up with the spooky house and the people and the... Um, but I like this really strong mix in this game of, like, the very mundane of, like, describing a family dinner. Yeah. And then, like, the very creepy of, like, you know... um what is this outsider doing? Yeah. You know, like you roll, it's like, does it, it possess a family member, is mm-hmm. turn the house against the family, you know, like all kinds of things. Yeah, um, there's a lot of wild stuff that can happen in this game. And then yeah. at the end, the roll off is, um, you've got 
the family gets a number of D6s based on the number of family members, the number of seen cards without Xs, uh, and the number of revealed outsider cards. Um, and then the outsider gets 3D6 plus a number of D6 based on the number of seen cards with Xs and the number of unrevealed outsider cards. Mm-hmm. So then you roll those against each other, and whoever has the higher number uh, wins. And yeah. either the outsider takes a soul or, uh, you know, the family gets rid of the outsider. Yeah. It's wild. It's very cool. That's very cool. Um, it's And it honestly, for a two-page game, I think really evocative. Like we, you know, again, like some of the games we talked about last week, too, it's just like we've done a very quick character creation mm-hmm. um just running down this list and then we did obviously get a little bit into gameplay when we start talking about like what is a normal night and that kind of stuff yeah a little bit of world um, building and stuff there too but like very evocative for something so small and i think i think that's a really exciting thing mm-hmm. about micro rpgs is that you have such a limited amount of space and amount of time yeah. to really get to the feelings that you want to get to. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be really smart about what things you have people do and why. Yeah. Exactly. And um, I think that this one does a really good job of, of like making you feel that kind of like creeping dread of like, I'm making these decisions. What are you going to do with them? Mm-hmm. Like, what, are you, what are you going to do to my perfect little house? You yeah. know? I mean, and we obviously added some of that on our own by being like, it's much more creepy if this baby is perfect, Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) you know, but like, it's fun. It's fun to kind of, um, that creeping sense of dread. Mm -hmm. I really like, I really liked it. This was a good one. Yeah. I really like creating the characters that, uh, in a way that will help enhance horror down the line. Right. Like without even knowing the gameplay and just knowing horror tropes. Like, okay, this can be exploited very easily. This can be exploited very easily. Uh, and The choice adding, to not name them. <laughs> yeah, the choice to not name them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on here. I really like this one. Yeah, this is a good time. Um, so we're going to completely change tone on yeah. everybody uh, right now, which is very... Uh, funny to say because we're going to be talking about van gogh's ear uh, speaking of tone and listening and mm-hmm. whatever never mind. um <laughs> good try though a for it was an audio pun sorry what's in a game complexity one um so this is a playing time of under an hour and you need a standard deck of playing cards with the jokers removed um and the genre is comedy the tone is funny it's a gm less game uh, content, cruel, dramatic irony, cringingly terrible choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, two pages. Um, yes, so this one is by uh, Jen Alex and Keith Baker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am excited about this one. Absolutely. Um, so uh, Obviously, Van Gogh, uh, not a great gift giver. No. Nobody really wants a severed ear. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see if we can do any better than him. Let's see. Um, So, before making characters, work with the other players to define the time and place of your story. Choose an option from the following table or make up your own. I I like tables, so let's do that. We love a good table. Um, The setting will inform your choices in making your characters and relationships uh, and will provide some sense of what gifts are possible. All right, so we've got a card between um, ace through king. Okay. So Let's I will draw one. Here. Yeah. Does that work for you? Yeah. Um, I have a seven. Okay. So the setting is a fallout shelter the day after. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's interesting. Okay. Trying to figure out. Um, okay, cool. So this is a fallout shelter the day after. I'm assuming the day after um, the end of the world. Day after whatever thing forced you into a fallout shelter. I yeah. Assume. Uh, could be tomorrow. The it day after be. tomorrow. Oh, okay. uh-huh. uh, huh? Which uh-huh. is a movie. Mm-hmm. Never mind. <laughs> You're 0 for 2 on this one, Ryan. 
I think I'm hilarious. Let's make some people. All right, I need I need cards. I'm gonna get up my uh, trusty Sailor Moon deck. Okay. Because I'm move this book closer to me because I can't read it from there. So now we get to create characters for this Fallout Shelter. Right. So we see the chart on the previous page. Mm-hmm. Um, next, you should create a character. Um, a blah, blah, blah. Define a role, a defining trait, a thing that you love, and a prized possession. Okay. All right. So I really want to do cards for these ones as well. Oh, yeah. I love a good random draw. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to draw for mine. Oops. I'm going to draw for mine um, if you want to draw for yours. And then we can mm-hmm. kind of meet back up and explain what we got. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Okay. i really sure how that works, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Lord. Um, oh. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Um, so for my role, yeah, I am an actor. Ooh. My defining trait is that I'm shy. Aw. Um, I love romance. Okay. And my prized possession is a child. <laughs> it's a child. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so my character's role is a uh-huh. therapist. Uh huh. Defining trait: compassionate. Oh, uh-huh. that makes sense. Loves themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Prize possession is artwork, a portrait or sculpture, and I'm going to say it's a portrait of themselves. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I want to know how I'm a shy actor, but um... well, I, I, you know what? I, I know a lot of people that do acting that are shy. That's and fair to like kind be, of get out of that bubble. Yeah. So instead of like I'm myself, I can be somebody else and the lines are given to me. It's fair. I love that you are um, really selfish. And <laughs> I love myself. You're compassionate. So. I'm a really good person. Yeah. You're a therapist who's compassionate, but you love your portrait of yourself. Yep. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> it was, um, uh, it was very nice. Uh, very well done, mm-hmm. and uh, and it really shows off uh, my best part, which is, which is my me? compassionate face. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know if my prized possession is a child. Like, do I keep it in a glass case or like? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I mean, it could be uh, could be a literal child. It could be a uh, like a pet that you say is a child. No pet is a different choice. <laughs> oh <terrible>. no, <laughs> that is true. Wow. Okay. Prized possession, child. So I mean, I guess pos- it makes sense that, like, you know, like my child would be a thing that is very dear to me. Yes. Um, just, I also like the idea for comic effect of my prized possession being my child. Like, I make him get dressed in his little sailor outfit every morning and go stand on that pedestal. <laughs> Adorable. Oh, that poor child. Yeah. Well, we are in okay. a fallout shelter, so things are a little weird off the bat. <sighs> That was my one thing that I had to bring with me. You know, they say that, like, one, what one thing would you save in a fire? And yours mm-hmm. is your portrait of yourself, and mine is my child. <laughs> it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so once you've come up with the basic details, name your character. Um, work to work with the players to your left and to your right to finalize the details and critically to define your connection to each of them. Mm-hmm. It's really just us. So, yeah. Um, what is a good name for an actor? Ooh. Her name is Calpurnia Winthrop. Calpurnia Winthrop. Nice. Mm-hmm. Is that she, her pronouns? Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, uh, Elaine Tegerton. Oh, also she, her. Okay, so we've got our people. Um, now we have to work together to finalize our details and uh, define connections to each other. Are you friends, relatives, coworkers, lovers? Will you or why will you be giving each of these people tragic and wonderful gifts? I think you are my therapist, but I'm an extremely needy patient. Hmm. I like that. 
And I think maybe you put up with that because you're a fan of my work. Oh, that's very interesting. I like those connections. Goodness. Okay. And now we're trapped in a fallout shelter together. Yeah. So, um, let's see here. It says, each player should introduce their character, providing as much or as little detail as they choose, and mentioning their relationships with the other characters. So it's the two of us. We already talked about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, together, decide if the gift giving takes place at a special event, if so, where, or whether it will occur over a period of time. You can use this table to inspire you. Um, okay. So, we're in a fallout shelter. Mm-hmm. It's the day after. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're giving gifts because we survived together. Uh, and your child. Yes. Okay. That's wild. Do, do I... It's my therapist office, like, uh, have, like, a fallout shelter and a daycare. It's like, you're in therapy, and then everything hits the fan, and we have to take cover in my fallout shelter. I think my child is actually just a doll. Oh, creepy. hmm Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay. hmm It's my prized possession. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> so you have your child with you in therapy. Yeah. In therapy. Mm-hmm. Because you can't leave your child alone. No, that would be irresponsible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm in therapy because I think this child is my child. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so just, just for all of our listeners to be aware that mental illness is a real thing. I have many of them. Yes. My therapist would look at me weird if I told her a doll was my child, though. And she says a lot of things about me because I've been seeing her for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> okay. So we've got that set up. Um, and now this is, an, for me, an eternal therapy session. Isn't that I great? I know. <laughs> for free. For free. Because it's, uh, you know, what's money anymore now that the world That's, has ended? Right. Well, you can't bill the insurance company, so you're not getting paid. Exactly. Uh, money doesn't matter. We've got our canned food for the next 15 years uh, mm-hmm. before, it's safe enough, <laughs> before it's safe enough to uh, get to the surface and pay for everything in bottle caps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have to introduce our characters. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so we, we've done that. Um, and then we've got these other things to answer as well, a few things to consider. What does your character have? Uh, so what sort of things would your character have access to based on your role in the setting? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess... I guess the question is, like, how posh is this fallout shelter? Is this, like, fallout shelter to the stars, or is this, like... Crap, we didn't know anything was coming. Get to the basement. Um, I like the latter. Okay. Like it's like it's a preparedness shelter. Like like it's prepared. It's it's comfortable. It's got some stuff. It's yeah. got stuff. It's got it's got room for like maybe uh four or five families. Oh, and okay. enough enough supply for that many for about ten to fifteen years. Oh wow. Okay. But it's like all, you know, non perishable goods right. and yeah. All that sort of stuff. So it's going to be a lot of, like, spam and everything. Yeah, a lot of MREs and... Yeah, yeah. Can um, water or whatever. Like, we're good enough to... Well, we can survive. Okay. Um, And so I probably have uh, my notebooks and all that sort of stuff. Sure. Um, And you've got whatever probably you took with you to your session. Right. Which I think is, like, just a truly fabulous outfit. Yeah. Um, it's not like a like not like you know like TMZ Stars Day Out kind of outfit. I'm thinking right. like 1920s like sparkly flapper dress and like a oh. scarf and like a head you know, feathers that like oh, just like over the top. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what year it is that we're playing in, but it doesn't matter. That's what I'm wearing. Okay. Um, and it's my doll is um it's like a little porcelain doll and so it has hair that's in like perfect like ringlet curls and like a very ruffly lacy dress okay um yeah just very fancy and it is like pristine even though i carry it around everywhere it is like in remarkably good shape yeah okay so um what was the thing you love romance yes i love romance and you love yourself and i love myself so now we have to think about what the other character wants Mm-hmm. And so it says, you know what they love and prize. What's the most thoughtful and meaningful gift you could give them? And also, uh, what does this gift cost you? 
What is the tragic sacrifice your character has to make to acquire or create this gift? Wow. So, uh, so like we're in a fallout shelter. So no matter what we give the other person, like it's from a very limited supply of things. Yes. Right. Yeah. (sighs) It's gotta be tragic. It's gotta be tragic. Okay. I think because I love romance, I am going to say that like when we're trapped in this fallout shelter, you are the person that I know the best. Mm -hmm. And I like develop these like romantic ideals for Mm -hmm. you. So I paint my doll to look like you. (gasps) Oh. (laughs) Okay. And potentially give that to you. Oh, wow. That's that's a really big... It's like proof of how much I care about you. And and growth as well. Yes. Yes. Wow. I'm getting rid of the doll, the thing that you have been asking me to do. Yeah. I was listening. I was listening. <laughs> In our therapy sessions. Plus it's art. Right. So it's like even better. Right. Wow. Okay. Uh, not creepy at all, but I like it. Um, but it did all the things. See, it was romance, and it was you, and it was yep. art, and it was me listening to you as my therapist and getting rid of my doll. Exactly. And please just love me. Oh, God, please love me. You know what? Um, let's see here. Goodness. Uh, so, romance, child. Um, so, it's got to be something probably grandiose. Oh, goodness. Because we're going to be stuck down here for yeah, uh, like over a decade. A long time, potentially. Uh, Yeah, might be, might be just us. Might be forever. Might be forever. Uh, So yeah, I think my character would probably reciprocate uh, those romantic feelings. Uh, Being a fan of yours, Mm -hmm. uh, being a fan of your character, um, and like being a little starstruck since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're like such a brilliant actor. So like, um, I would probably like. I would m- probably try to make a like, gosh, like a like a a child doll as well, mm-hmm. out of like uh, old clothing and stuff, and Aww. like stuffing and and try to create like a a plushy sort of uh, doll, uh, like based on uh, one of your characters. Uh, from one of the one of your earlier pieces or whatever. Ooh, cool. Um, which would be kind of fun, and then it would be like a like a play uh, play pal for your child. Yeah, which you have given me. It's pretty good. So, like, I can kind of see it being like we're starting this family. Of oh, dolls. Oh, this creepy doll family. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> so cute. And the first it's, one looks like you. I know. And the second one looks that's like you. That's how you know it's yours. <laughs> and the second one looks like you. <laughs> it's my doll, but it looks like you. So that's how you know that it's also your child. I know. It's true. And my child. <laughs> it's our child. Um. So the goal is to come up with a <laughs> gift that is both wonderfully considerate, but that also requires a tragic sacrifice on the part of your character. Um, oh, goodness gracious. My other thought for you was that you could repaint your painting of yourself to be a painting of us. Oh, yeah. And I'm not the greatest at painting. I don't know if I am either, but I painted my doll anyway. <laughs> no, I think, I think what it is, is, um, we set you and the two dolls up. Mm-hmm. And then I paint over my painting to incorporate you and the two the dolls, two dolls. <sighs> into uh, our family portrait. Oh, yeah! Look at our entirely codependent Fallout Shelter little gay family. <laughs> this is so not healthy. RPGs, <laughs> yay! <laughs> they can do anything. <laughs> you want a gay family of dolls in a Fallout Shelter? Have I got a game for you? <laughs> Wow. We, we we just played the game, I think. I think we did. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um Yeah, so it actually goes on for uh once every character has given and received two gifts, then you take a moment to reflect on the final situation 
did anyone actually come out ahead uh, despite receiving and giving terrible gifts? Are they somehow better off? Uh, who made the most significant sacrifice? And will anyone actually enjoy their gifts? You know what? I I think we're both very happy. I yeah. think we really did sacrifice something, but we made the, the best end, of the situation. We we earned love. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You do what you can at the end of the world. It's it's true. You know, you make the you make the best of what you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we did that. <laughs> This is really this, this, was, this is such a silly game. I love was, it. So much. I could see this being a lot of fun with like a lot of people, especially if like your connections to each other, you know, like aren't yeah. in pairs like that. Oops. Mm -hmm. If they're not in pairs like that, you can kind of like, you know, I'm giving you a gift, but you're not reciprocating. Like, yeah, and kind of one upping each other and yeah, all that sort of because you have to give two gifts or receive two gifts. Right. 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 Yeah, this would be fun. Yeah, this would be a lot of fun. This this could get super wild. Um. And just the fact that everything was kind of uh, coded because we rolled or we pulled a fallout shelter the day after for our scenario. Right. Uh, there, are, there are so many, like you could get the Royal Dungeon, uh, Prom Night, uh, 19th Century Paris. There's a whole bunch of yeah. different cool options on here. Yeah. I like office Christmas party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just terrible secret Santas. Yeah. Um, could exactly. be a lot of fun. Could mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. Yeah. This is a very cool one. Yeah, this one's really great. Complexity is one uh, mm -hmm. out of four. So, yeah, it's uh, really, really neat. Yeah. Goodness. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if there's much else we can say about this game. I mean... I don't think so. Character creation was pretty straightforward, and uh, and and we got some decent thought processes out of that. Yeah, I definitely think if you had more people and you went a couple of rounds, it would be a lot of fun to sort of, like, dig into who these people really are. Yeah. Um. But even just, like, the base um, sort of pulls that we made on, like, who a person is, what they care about, you know, that kind of stuff um, was pretty evocative. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of fun options in there. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, this was a good game. This was, was really good. Both of, these, both of these games were a lot of fun. So. Yeah. Uh, and both were kind of dark in a way, right? Potentially. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. like it. Um, yeah, this one was obviously a little less dark, but, you know. And, yeah. The idea of like having to give a gift, at, like sacrifice to yourself, has the potential has the potential to be really sad too. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, even though it's it's a little bit silly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very yeah. cool. I like so it. So that is another week of micro RPGs and <laughs> us creating something. <laughs> we think they were characters. I'm pretty sure they were characters. I'm pretty sure uh, they were characters. Hey, we Calpurnia names. Winthrop is yeah, a character. Yeah, Elaine Tagerton. Uh, we but we've got the uh, the classy names going on here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, we will be back next week with two more games. Absolutely. We'll see you then. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I really loved this combination of games. Uh, I really liked leaning into the horror tropes. Uh, of Antoine Souls, and then uh, whatever happened in Van Gogh's here. <laughs> <laughs> it was gay dolls in a fallout shelter, Ryan. I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like it's that difficult to understand. <laughs> I know. It's a tale as old as time, so I don't know why it didn't click. So Two people fall in love. They make each other creepy dolls. I don't know. Yeah, and paint portraits of it, so it's yeah. fine. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that, that game's got some wild potential for sure. Um, if you want to check out these games for yourself and many more like them, you can grab a copy of James D'Amato's book uh, that has all of them. Uh, and that's linked right in our show notes. Yeah, it's a great book. Like we've we've gotten to touch on just a few of the games in there. Mm -hmm. um, and they are wild. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them They're are so very fun. Well. They're so yep. fun. Mm -hmm. um, I am looking forward also to hopefully doing a couple more of these uh in the Patreon bonus feed. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of nice short little snippets so we don't have to do like the full series the way we do yeah. when we sit down with designers and stuff and it's easier for us to just do them together by ourselves. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you will hear a little bit more of those if you back the One Shot Network Patreon. Um, it's patreon.com slash one shot podcast and you can sign up at the $5 level and get those. Mm -hmm. 
We also would love for you to check out the Acaticon Kickstarter. It's still going strong. There is a little over a week left. Um, and it would be really great to help get it funded and to hopefully see you there. And mm-hmm. if not, um, you can definitely sponsor a table. There's a couple other options for helping to fund things outside of just attending the convention. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely it would be cool to see people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another really cool thing that you can do to help us out is to leave a five-star review uh, for us anywhere you can. Uh, iTunes is the big one, uh, but Podchaser, Podchaser is really great too, uh, along with Stitcher and apps like Podcast Addict. Those are the main places that we can see easily. Uh, if you already left us a review, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to help out even further, uh, that also doesn't cost anything extra, aside from a little bit of time, uh, is to recommend us to people online. Uh, if you see somebody asking about TTRPG podcast requests, maybe drop them our handle at CreationCast and tell them why you love listening. Uh, we love what we are doing here, and we hope you all do as well. And it really does make us feel pretty amazing when we see people talking about the show. Uh, which leads us to our next review by Udon Bullets on Ponchaser. They said... I came across the OneShot Network back in December of last year and branched out to C3 in March. Since then, I've binged about two-thirds of their backlog, and it has become one of my top three podcasts. Amelia and Ryan do a great job diving into various TTRPG systems through the lens of character creation. They either have guests who are deeply familiar with the system as fans, players, or actual play podcasters, or the creators of the system. Between the guests and the hosts, each episode is full of insight into the system of interest. Their character evolution cast episodes are full of insight into the hobby overall. They have a focus on advice for players, but there is advice to take away from a player, GM, or even a designer point of view. Obviously, the content on its own is enough to draw anyone in, but the host's attitude is what really secured this as being one of my favorite podcasts. They approach each game with an open mind, even if it is not normally their style of game, and they always ask great questions that lead to an intelligent discussion. Either listen from the beginning, or pick a series that catches your eye. You can't go wrong with Character Creation Cast. That is so nice. I know. I'm like a little bit weepy. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm emotionally stable, no big deal. <laughs> it's, it's fine. No, it was, no it's um, really, really, like, really nice and really thoughtful, and I always appreciate when... Um, when people comment on like you know, not just the games that we cover and that kind of stuff, but like mm-hmm. um, you know, our ability to like have discussion and, and stuff like that, because it just feels nice. Yeah. Um because I'm and I like honestly I'm I'm really proud of the show that we make. Um mm-hmm. and I don't feel bad saying that. I like I think we make a pretty great show. <laughs> yeah, um, it is pretty good. Yeah. I listen a, every week. It's it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um but yes, thank you so much. That was really nice. I really appreciate mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Yeah. Well, thank you to you, and thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, for another episode. We will see you next week uh, for two more micro RPG games to finish out this series. Until then, have a lovely week. Take care. Stay safe. Drink water. um, Tell people that you love them. Uh, Find your favorite creators and tell them that you like their stuff. Uh, (laughs) All that kind of stuff. We'll see you next week. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. 
Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role playing games. Except the games are terrible and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best. It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at SystemMasteryPodcast.com or OneShotPodcast.com. Finally.